people of Holland have been left a terrible legacy of desolation by the beaten Nazis. Ruthlessly flooded by the Germans in their fighting retreat, thousands of acres of rich land lie covered by many feet of sea water. Much of this land has been painfully reclaimed from the sea, and with the bursting of the dikes, the work of many years has been destroyed. The Allies have made the work of draining these areas a first priority job. Along the canals, Royal Naval barges carry cargoes of diesel oil by which mobile pumps can be set to work on the preliminary drainage. Speed is essential, for land underwater more than six months takes three years to become fit for growing crops. More barges bring long-delayed supplies of coal for the power stations, which will bring the large-scale electric pumps into action. Overhead runways speed up the work of unloading as supplies mount up. Inside the power station itself, the generators begin to turn after many months of disuse. Over at the pumping station, the great pumps are able to begin a task which at the present rate of working will take nearly a year to complete. It will be a long time before the Netherlands are back to normal, but the industry of the Dutch people, helped by their allies, is doing much to wipe away some of the scars of German occupation. Walter, Admiral Sir Algernon Willis, takes up his new duties as Commander-in-Chief of the Mediterranean Fleet. Saying goodbye to his old command, Admiral Sir John Cunningham leaves to take up his post as First Sea Lord. According to custom, the retiring commander is rowed out to his flagship by six of his senior captains. Cheered by men of the Mediterranean fleet, the cruiser Ajax leaves Valletta Harbour as a great sailor bids farewell to the George Cross Island.